Now, I just want to start out by saying, because I'll segue from the gorgeous day, the light's coming in from the east, and this is beautifully lit. As the sun moves away, and as the day goes on, and in winter and so forth, it's very gloomy, and you don't see the beautiful architecture and the stained glass windows. And so uh, that's to give you a little hint at what I'm going to say at the end, and I hope you notice some L-I-G-H-T-I-N-G, some lighting. <laughs> it's a major project, and we're so thrilled. And we're the first people that are seeing it. So I'm Diana Carlisle, I'm one of the friends of, Lee, of Louisa Howard Chapel. There's two other friends, Liz Bossy and Rita Church are here too, and Kathy Davis is uh, also a wonderful active member, and Anne Vivian has come on to help us. She's an architect, and we're thrilled. So um, we're carrying on a tradition that was begun in the 90s um, by some women who gathered to rehab this beautiful spot. At that moment, they were, one of them was coming to bury her husband, and she looked from the driveway, and she said, oh, that's a lovely little place. Why can't I have a service there? So, man, no, no. It's the one in the disrepair, and it's used for casket storage. And she said, oh. And she went home and thought about it, and she said, mm -hmm. So she gathered a bunch, a group of women, and it happened to be women, maybe one or two men, I'm not sure. Anyway, and they spent 15 years gathering the funds, over $100,000, getting architects and craftsmen to touch up what, and finish what, or keep up what's here, and the city put in some money over $100,000, and in 2006, it was re-consecrated or re-dedicated, not consecrated, because it's non-denominational. It did start out as an Episcopal uh, affiliation. So um, anyway, in 2006, and now we are thrilled because it is available and open to, it's owned by the city, and it's available to anybody to rent. Uh, 100 bucks a day, for $100 an hour, uh, 150 for the week for Saturday, it's closed on Sunday. But the, one of our purposes is to make sure that, to encourage people to use it. Weddings, we've had some charming little weddings here, services, music programs, and you can think of other things. It seats 55. So we're grateful to um, Louisa Howard, for whom it's named, who in 1882, about 10 years after the cemetery was established, decided that it was too far out, it was on the edge of the city. That was a farm there, edge of the city. The horse trolley came out, later the electrified trolley came out. But she decided that um, it, there should be a place here for people to gather and have a little service before they buried their loved ones. And so she gave the money and it's high Victorian Gothic. It's beautiful, designed by Fisher, is his last name, Adia Fisher, anyway. And it was dedicated in 1882. Louisa Howard was part of the Howard family, you may have heard from Pop John Purple Howard, who gave the uh, opera building down there that's now, the anyway, very, very philanthropic, philanthropic family. And she gave it, and um, uh, she died a few years later. She also gave funds for uh, cancer, for uh, health. She gave the home for the destitute children and something else. She was a fabulous woman. And she had her money from the Howards who got their money from hotels. And as she, she died just a couple years after this was um, dedicated. And um, her last words, don't spend great sums for my funeral. Give the money to the poor. Mm -hmm. So she was a beautiful woman, and I'm so glad you are seeing the way it was. The stars are original. The, this was touched up. All the stenciling was touched up, but it was the way it was. The benches were original. They were found in store. The other uh, altar is original. That was found in store. And um, anyway, I, uh, so we're thrilled that it's um, uh, open. It's radiant heating, so it's uh, you can use it all year. Um, anyway, uh, 
you just have to contact Park and Rec in Burlington to, to get any details. Um, so the last part of the story is that, um, as I say, it was gloomy, and we friends, uh, the new friend, we call it, well, we're new friends, although Liz was here when it was being done, but uh, we're carrying on, and um, uh, we thought, what can we do? And some, one of the early friends, original friends, gave us a lovely donation as seed money and said, use it for the chapel. And so we said, hmm, hmm, hmm. And one day we were in there, we said, got to really do something about the lighting. And uh, just happened to be an architect from one of the firms down in Burlington was here. He'd never been here. And he was really enjoying himself. And by the way, look up at that lovely uh, stained glass up there. He was sitting here looking at that, and he sat, sat, sat. And we, so we had a few chances, and he said, I'm an architect, and if you want to do a lighting, I, I have the name of a designer, lighting designer. So we said, oh, 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 oh. So uh, we said, okay, so we called, we got a design, and then we thought, what shall we do? It was a beautiful design. How shall we do it? So do we have it in us? being very honest, to do a capital campaign and so forth. So just before the pandemic, we thought, let's go for it, we'll try. Then the pandemic hit and everything happened. The price went up, the cushions weren't available. We were running out of a little more steam and then um, we sat here at the end of last year, 23, in the fall and said, okay, maybe we should try it. We got updated list, we went home, the day before Thanksgiving, I got a call out of the blue. A gentleman said, I have parents buried here. I have grandparents buried here. I've got a plot. I would like to do something for the chapel. Do you have a project? <laughs> <laughs> we said, do we have a project? <laughs> oh my gosh. He said, what's your budget? I said, well, it's a big budget. We want to do it in, in stages. He said, I don't like stages. I want to do the whole thing. <coughs> he said, as long as you can put the money into the charitable organization by the end of the year, I will give you the money. Well, I mean, and he did. And as we said, there really is a Santa Claus. <laughs> so anyway, that's been the last, well, what is this, May? So since January, we had an electrician that was our hard to get, and in last week, the last of the lights went in, and it's going to be adjusted. There's still little things, but all that is new up there. The sconces are new. All this is new. These are new up there, and um, there's something else that I'm thinking. Oh, oh, of course. We kept tripping. People kept tripping over this when they would come. I like on their face. So we had, this is for safety, those little lights there. So anyway, that's the last project, and we are just thrilled. We're going to have an event of some sort to recognize the people from way back that were so instrumental in keeping this. So that's a story, and if anybody has any questions, or we'll be here until we end up. Did I forget anything? No. Can you talk yeah. a little bit about the stenciling? Like, Thank you, Pat. The stenciling? What? Can you talk a little bit about uh, well, it was original, and we did hire, we, I wasn't part of it, but that group that uh, worked until 2006 hired a craftsman who could re replicate and redo and, and, and do them. The stained glass was made in New York, uh, New York City by someone in New York City back in 1882. They are original. And we got some lucite or some protective on the outside, which is also hindering the sun, but we're going to be replacing that. We have money for that so that it's protected. The only reason that they're still here and it wasn't vandalized, somebody said, was maybe because the people knew that the caskets in here. And they were, they were a little bit like caskets. <laughs> caskets. I mean, it was, you know, kind of a, 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 a forbidden, uh, any, maybe, uh, who knows. But anyway, uh, I should have said burial practice has changed and people had cars, and that's why it wasn't as used as it had originally been designated. Um, and things change, so, um, but, um, so. Has it always been non-denominational, this chapel? 
it was not a nominee. Not no, it was uh, consecrated by the Episcopal Bishop. Yes, and I think uh, I think Louisa Howard. I, I don't think I know. She did give some money to the Episcopal Church for something or one of their projects. Yes, but it's non-denominational, run by the city, and um, uh, 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 it's run out of. There's an administrative assistant in the office all the most mornings, and um, you could always call and ask. Uh, we've seen a lovely music. I've seen a lovely music program here. Someone that had a big funeral down in the church, but they wanted to gather their friends here and their family prior to the service, and they had a beautiful uh, guitar and violin played lovely Appalachian spring folk music here, and the children just got up and spoke, you know, as they wished, and the family had a private time. And I said, boy, that really touched me. <laughs> so there's all sorts of things. Yes. Um, do you happen to know if uh, this wainscoting, the gray wood on the bottom, and also the blue wood on top, is that original or is that replaced with uh, new? Uh, I think it's original. I'll ask Liz. Yeah, yeah. It, it's original. The, the space wasn't used that often. Could you speak louder, please? It, it's original, as far as we know. I mean, it, it is. The, the space was not used that often because it was closed during the winter because it wasn't really heated. They weren't doing uh, services or burying. Um, so it got very little use. Yeah. So, yeah, pretty much everything is original. You know, the, the stenciling on the ceiling, the paint, that is original. It was touched up somewhat. But that is from, you know, the 1880s. That was the style. Um, the stenciling around the windows, um, they found ghost images of this stencil underneath when they did spectrometry or whatever they do to look at the paint, and so that is what, that is the style. It's a little, not as, as fine as I would have thought, but that is what was there, so. And are those before and after pictures? Yeah, there are a few before pictures and during the renovation. Yeah, the, the, there's a lot of plaster off the lath, so it was really plastered, but um, yeah, the wood is, you know, the wood ornamentation is, is original. And the colors went back to, you know, they did studies, and you know, this is, for the things that were repainted, but there's very little. As I said, the ceiling is original. Are the, pen, the benches original also? They are. Yeah, they're one of the early, you know, manufactured, mass-produced. I'm not sure which they came from, Sears, Montgomery Ward, something like that. And nothing's been done to them either, as you can probably tell. They've been Murphy oiled a number, number of times, but um, dusted. Some of some of the benches came in from Rock Point. Okay, some from Rock Point, but it's the same style. What? Same style. Yeah, same thing. Yeah. yeah. And apparently, uh, I read somewhere recently that it was electrified in the 1930s. So prior to that, oil or nothing, I don't know, but it was electrified in the 1930s. And uh, so um, Tom Visser had a preservation. UVM Preservation Program was called in to do an assessment as the woman began to do to figure out what they wanted to do. I don't know if you were there. He he gave his historic assessment of what it was and what should happen. Found some serious problems. And Martin Tierney was the architect that was hired, and uh, then the craftsmen were the best that they could find to do this. Liz was on that. Okay, so anything. Else? Yes. Is Louisa Howard buried in the cemetery? Yes, and you'll, I think you'll probably stop. There. Okay. You'll stop. There's two Howard families. Otis Howard, General Otis Howard, is not part of the, that Howard family. He came later uh, because his son designed it. He's an Allen, or he's an Allen Williams. But the Howard family, John Purple Howard, was the one who grew up here and went down to New York City with his brother who made his fortune in the best hotel in New York. And John Purple Howard went down and worked with him and brought his fortune back. Yes? There are letter rooms over the arch, right out here in the yes. stone. Yes. I, I couldn't read it. What, I couldn't, what did it, it say? It said in, in, uh, in the, uh, my redeemer limits. Limits. My redeemer limits. I think that's what I remember. But you can check it. And also, there's a Howard Street 
Is it the same? Do you think it's probably the Howard what? Howard Street in Burlington. Oh, I'm sure. Same thing. I mean, <laughs> you know, Howard, Howard, Howard. Yeah, yeah. that's a very genteel and beautiful family. We're so grateful. Uh, oh, John Purple gave the gates here and two fountains, which are now not operating, although the friends, we did, after we did this, we did the gazebo, which you'll see, reconstructed that, Adirondack twig style or blog style, and then the two fountains, what to do. We said, okay, let's do one of the fountains. We got a replica, Victorian replica, and then we said, uh, winter and all, we don't want to run the water there, it's just be a big headache. So it's, a, it's not any water, but that's one of them. And the other one, the place is a crematorium where you can, where people have their ashes. So John Purple Howard was, and he's got a statue on the green at UVM. He gave a lot of things at UVM. Fine, fine family. People that give back to their community. And it lasts and goes on and future generations enjoy. So that's sort of what it's all about. Okay, we got a tour, I think. We're gonna to be here too, so thanks for coming in.